So, this is the killer guide on how to make friends. And I've been really refining these skills for the last 10, 15 years. So, if you want to make more friends in a non-creepy and non-awkward way, then watch the end of the video. These are skills that I wish I knew when I was younger. And all the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today isn't your typical stuff that most people tell you about. It's all the stuff, it's all the stuff that most people never tell you about. And so I want to make this as unique and valuable and I don't want to waste your time. And I'm going to be doing this while I am working out because your boy is 20% body fat and time to lose some weight. Today I'm testing my one rep max, but I also just hosted my first party in a long time and you know, something I've noticed is that a lot of people are feeling lonely these days, especially after the vid. And as we get more digitalized, like, people are feeling more lonely than ever. And so, I just want to help people with that. If you talk to my friends, a lot of them will say that I'm pretty popular, that I'm just a natural social butterfly. But to be honest, I wasn't always like this at all. And... Much like everybody thinks this is very natural, but it's honestly a skill that I've kind of built. Back in elementary school, middle school, even almost until my senior year of high school, I really wasn't that popular. I really didn't have that many friends. And um, I spent a lot of time alone. But, you know, I think it was my desperation for wanting new friends, talking to people on the phone all the time when I did become more popular and just doing things like social media. Back in the day, we didn't have like Facebook and Instagram. We had Zanga, which was really, really cool. That is how we used to make our friends and I kind of built relationships like that. And in my 20s, I went out clubbing all the time, went, met a lot of people from pharmacy school and all that. But something really interesting happened when I was in, when I, w when I turned 30. Suddenly, when I didn't go out as much anymore, and now as I was focusing more on my business, and as my friends started getting older, having kids, getting married and all that, I didn't feel like I was popular anymore, right? And especially when I had to move to Vegas, I felt like I had to start all over again. But let's go to the three problems uh, that I wrote down in the car as I was driving. It's like, there's three problems to making friends. It's like, one, how do you make new friends? Two, how do you deepen those relationships? And then, how do you get invited to more events? So we'll cover each one of these uh, as we ramp up my workout set. And I'm going to do this all in one take, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, let's talk about the first thing. How do you make new friends? Kind of like investing, your first friends will always be the hardest, right? And I think about like, okay, when I'm meeting new people, sometimes it feels awkward, but why? And a lot of times it's because we have nothing in common with the person that we're trying to be friends with at all. So one of the things that I do when I'm in a new city, because, you know, there was a point in my life when I was starting off new in Hong Kong, but by the end of my Hong Kong trip, I had a girlfriend, I had all these friends, and I thought I could live in Hong Kong forever. I had to do the same when I was in LA, and I had to do the same when I was in Vegas. And so one of the things I like doing is taking a note of all the hobbies that I really personally enjoy. So, if you can't tell, one, two, three. I obviously like lifting. I obviously like jujitsu. I like things like yoga and breath work, meditation. I like coffee shops, bookstores. Yours will be completely different, but I think the easiest way is just to meet people where, like at the places that you like. And so I heard, I've heard a lot of stories where people make friends at rock climbing or organizing hikes and stuff. And that, that is a great way, but you just have to kind of find the things that you like first, right? 
okay. But like, for example, like I go to jujitsu all the time, but just because you go to class or you take a certain class or do a certain workout doesn't mean people will automatically go to it too, right? So you actually have to talk to people and it's really not as intimidating as you think it is, right? So um, one of the things I like doing is like actually at coffee shops. So the reason why I like coffee shops is one, I can get my own work done for my YouTube channel, but then also I'm really into books. So I'll do a obs something called an observational opener. I learned this from the art of pickup back in the day, but it's like, whatever. It just starts off like this. Like I noticed that you're reading X, Y, Z. What made you pick up that book or how are you liking it so far? So you take something that you notice like an observation and you just point it out. And I do this with like books, t-shirts. And one of the things that bugs me a lot of times is like, in the pickup world sometimes, you'll see people like give these fake compliments. I like to be very genuine and wholesome. So they don't have any five plates here. What the heck no. Um, I just found my five plates. And so if I don't like something, I'm not gonna say I like it, but I do like to compliment like people. If you're like, hey, you have great taste. Or like even if you did I'm like, oh dude, your guard passing is like really sick or whatever, right? And it's just a mutual like, common ground, just a curiosity about someone. What made them pick up this thing? How did they get good at this? What made them choose that? What's the story behind all that? And just getting to know someone's vibe. You're not hitting on them or something like that, but like I get in the practice of approaching everyone. So in my opinion is like most people, like I've never been really shut down before in my life, right? Like where it's like, you're weird for talking to me, right? It's always been pretty wholesome and just giving good vibes, especially if you go the compliment route, like people always end up smiling. Two, three, four, five. <sighs> one cool story is um, one girl, she's actually getting hit on by some guy and uh, she, <laughs> the guy was like, uh, she was like, I do jujitsu. And the guy had no idea what jujitsu was. And so I was like, I go, I go in after they're done talking. I was like, oh, so you do jujitsu. And we end up in like a three, four hour conversation, just chopping it up and stuff. It's pretty random, pretty cool. But you know, like, I think that's the most wholesome way. But you might be asking like, okay, how do you deepen the relationship after that? And that go leads me to the next point, uh, hosting events. So, you know, like when I moved to Vegas, I realized that I was pretty good at chopping up with people, being very curious, understanding people's stories and stuff. But the relationships are pretty shallow. They would just go for like one, like we would just chop it up at the event. We got along, but there was no follow up or there's nothing else that we really did after. And so, um, I've only started recently doing this, but I started hosting events. And there's this great book called The Two Hour Cocktail Party. Really great book. It's a little bit, too, some of the things are a bit too formal for me, but it talks about the art of hosting events. And so as you meet these people together, right? Like you're gonna meet people who are really into jujitsu or maybe into hiking, or maybe people are just like, just want to meet other friends. This is to go back at the first point. Like I like to ask, I'm not sure if you're open to it, but one of the things I like doing in Vegas is just organizing events to introduce cool people to each other. If you're interested, I can grab your Instagram. I can let you know, are you down? Most of the time they'll, they'll be down. So you'll have this whole list of cool people. And then one of the things that I like doing is like planning events that I really like doing. So, or planning common events. So one of the things I recently did was host a birthday party. Now this birthday party, it was like, honestly, two months after my real birthday, but it didn't really matter. I just want to get people together and get the really cool people together that, um, of the people who invited me to their events and all that. And so I got to look this way. Hold on. One, two, three. Oh. Easy. I'm doing a five, three, one split, by the way. One of the things I did was like, I saw someone kind of do their own karaoke event. I got really inspired. And that's when I decided to host 
a karaoke event for my birthday. I picked a happy hour, but it was like 50% off because, you know, your boy, he loves a half off deal. <laughs> so I hosted it on Wednesday. It's very like a non-busy type of day and stuff like that. Like low commitment. Because the weekends, everybody got plans, right? But the, week uh, the weekdays, people are mostly free. So I planned something then I took care of all the food and stuff and you can choose to split it or whatnot. Just for me, like I like investing into relationships and right now my business is doing well so I can write it off as a networking event, right? But uh, to each their own too. But it was just really, really cool just introducing everyone to each other at the event yesterday. And one of the things I like to do is like prior to hosting the event and choosing a venue and all that and just like doing all the details, one of the things I like to do is get a head count first. So one of the things that I did was like, I wrote a list of people that I was thinking about inviting and I sent them a quick text message, very informal, just like, hey, I'm thinking about doing a karaoke night on this date at this time. If I did it, would you be down to go? And now you kind of have like a mini wait list of like the people who are interested in going to your event, right? And so I think that is, I think that's the first step, right? And then once you get those people, what I like to do is like, I book out the event, I get the people who said yes. And then the next step is, um, I wrote intros. Now this is completely optional, but I wrote intros of everyone just so that people wouldn't feel like awkward about like, oh, I don't know if I'll get along with the people. Like I made sure to intentionally like kind of group people in different categories. So for my event, I had like, I forget the exact categories, but basically I wanted so like if someone walked into the event, they were like, oh, I heard about you. Tell It just reduces the friction and gives someone in common to like talk about mutual subjects. So people found that like very thoughtful. I got a lot of feedback on it. They're like, oh my God, you like think about this with me? I'm like, yeah. So I kind of like in the intros, I was kind of breaking down like how I met them, some cool facts about them, the fun things that they're working on, all the stuff that I'm trying to do, like when I first meet someone and just understand someone, I just put it there and just put it in a very informal voice. So I had the whole list and it really hypes up the party. So uh, when yesterday, when everyone came, like everybody just kicked it off and stuff and I was introducing other people. This is in, all in that book, the two hour cocktail party, which I'll link below. But that was the basic general thing. And then after, I basically took a group picture with everyone so that, you know, people could follow each other on Instagram. Everybody was like, I have so much fun. And now we're planning our next event, which leads me to the third thing, right? It's like, how do you get invited to more events? But before that, let's hit this one right next. Yeah. <clears throat> Damn, that was hard. Ooh. 165. So notice everything I, I said was like a lot of work up front. I had to plan events, I had to meet people, but this is kind of like where compound interest comes in play and how you get invited to events. So one of the things I noticed, like all the people that I invited to my birthday karaoke thing, they were the people that invited me to their birthday parties or invited me to their events or holiday parties. And that's when I had this realization is if you host things, It'll really inspire other people to think of you when they host their own events. And so I like to really connect, like invite people who are also fellow connectors and doing things so I can get invited to more events. And not only that, one of the other things I really like doing is um, co-hosting events too. So one of my friends, Julia, like after I hosted my event yesterday, she's like, oh my God, I'll help you plan your next event and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, you can use, she was like, you can use my place. I'm like, oh, that's great because I don't have a really great venue. And so she's willing to use her place. And so we might do something as boring as bread baking or bread making like at our next meetup. But it doesn't really matter what we do. Now we have a place, we're co-hosting. She can invite people that she likes. I can invite people that I like. And then it makes it so much easier once you're at the venue to like, keep on inviting people too. I'll be honest, I've never really gotten turned down for like, or rejected hard for any of the events. If anything, people will just ghost if they're not interested. So 
and I never force people either. So I don't guilt trip people for not coming or anything like that. It's totally cool. I keep it very, very chill. That's a very informal way of how I make friends. Um, let me know how it goes. If you like more of these like informal life videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Here are some other videos that the Algal Gods think that you'll like too. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace, mother people.